I'm Alex Miller, writer for Battleship Pretension and Film Inquiry. Um, today we're going to check out the trailer for uh, one of my favorite films from one of my favorite directors, and that is Dennis Hopper's 1980 film, Out of the Blue. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a big fan of Dennis Hopper. Um, as an actor, he's magnificent, and as a director, he's, uh, he's left behind a uh, relentlessly compelling uh, body of work. Um, his movies are contradictory, uh, anarchic, uh, flawed, wonderful, and his films are just kind of, uh, you know, teeming with this kind of uh, maverick originality. Uh, whether it's um, Easy Rider or the last movie or today's film, Out of the Blue, there's a, just a, such a unique distinction and um, uh, in, in indescribable sense of style in all of his movies. Um, so, uh, Out of the Blue, it's um, not an easy film to watch. It's, uh, it's about a uh, family, a very fractured family. Um, the father, played by Dennis Hopper, is uh, just getting out of a prison term. Um, the, his wife has uh, become a drug addict. Um, however, the main focus of the film is uh, their daughter, CB, played by uh, Linda Mons. Um, probably best known for her role in uh, Days of Heaven. She was also in David Fincher's uh, The Game and a few other uh, notable credits, including a really great film uh, called The Wanderers. Um, maybe I'll cover that sometime. Um, anyhow, their daughter, CB, is uh, not only navigating the perils of adolescence, but she's graduated from uh, Elvis Presley to Johnny Rotten and the Sex Pistols and has uh, immersed herself in the burgeoning punk movement. Um, considering the time was made, this is a period from, you know, between the years 1977 in 1980, you had the rise and fall of the Sex Pistols, you had the death of Elvis. Um, you had these huge changes going on in the, in the world of music, and um, it's really uh, beautifully summarized in this movie, as well as uh, Neil Young's original song, um, you know, Out of the Blue, or My My Hey Hey, or Hey Hey My My, I forget which order. Anyhow, um, uh, there's, like, uh, there's so much to say about uh, this wonderful title. Uh, where to begin. However, recently, the BFI, the British Film Institute, uh, put this uh, Blu-ray out, and um, after watching the movie and gnawing on all the many, many, many wonderful bonus features, I'd say this is definitely the, uh, this is the definitive version of the film. Um, also, the British Film Institute sent out a complimentary tote bag with the Blu-ray. Yay! It's already full of stuff, but pretty cool. Thank you very much. Love it. Um, anyhow, that's enough for me. Let's check out this trailer. Well, I guess first and foremost, a shout out and thank you to Chloe Savenier and Natasha Leone for um, participating in restoring this film. I think um, this Blu-ray will definitely uh, have something to do with this film getting a very deserved uh, renaissance. From out of the blue comes the most controversial movie of the year. Kind of a sucker Dennis for the uh, vintage the trailer narration. It's probably why I prefer this version. The 80s. Uh, there's Linda Mans. Um, she's so terrific, and she just has this, uh, such a unique screen presence and performing style. And again, the work she's, she's doing here with Dennis Hopper is so fascinating. And it's also really unfortunate that she didn't work with Dennis Hopper again. I think they, th those two were very much uh, simpatico in making of this movie. I'd say alongside Days of Heaven, it's probably one of her best performances. There she is, uh, jamming out with the pointed sticks. Uh, great selection for the film, and they too are also a very underrated uh, Canadian uh, punk band. Linda Mons, is, Linda Mann's uh, character is named CB. They go to visit her father in, in prison, and it's a it's a devastating scene, and it's uh, some of Hopper's uh, best acting, which is which is really saying something considering his body of work. Uh, see, even this little exchange of looks, it, it communicates so much. Such a evocative and striking image with the two phones there it's like really a testament to dennis hopper's uh prowess as a as an artist and as a director and actor out of the blue has a raw energy and life to it see roger ebert uh you know getting it right once again we miss you it really kind of explores that uh, very fraught um, age of adolescence. Uh, she's at that age where, you know, she's too old for the kid's table, but she can't hang with the grown-ups yet. It's a very unique psychological area to, to, to position yourself in terms of uh, telling a story and writing a film. What this movie perfectly captures is that when you're at the age CB is in this movie, when you discover something as revolutionary and as profound as punk rock, it really becomes your everything. It's a defining characteristic of your identity. 
And the way the film immerses itself into the punk scene is perfectly analogous with Linda Manz's, um, you know, uh, fascination with it as well. And I think Dennis Hopper really understands the material better than I think a lot of other films and filmmakers from this period. I mean, The Death of Elvis and the song written by Neil Young, um, in the lyrics, uh, the king is dead but not forgotten, this is the story of a Johnny Rotten. Uh, those lyrics, I think, really are profound and it really does synopsize and kind of summarize the um, major themes of the movie. Again, if you can get your hands on the BFI Blu-ray, go for it. But, you know, stream it, watch it, do do whatever. Just just see the, see the movie. <laughs> um, anyhow, this has been Alex from The Trailer Project. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Be safe out there, and we'll catch you later.